Public Affairs Forum of WZTV Fox 17. And now your host, Dr. James Haney. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is survival skills program. And we're fortunate to have with us a person who has been involved with this survival skills program, uh, Mr. Kendall Stevens, who is the facilitator for the program. And Mr. Stevens, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haney. You know, uh, when we talk about uh, Mr. Stevens' uh, survival skills program, exactly what are we talking about and, and, and where is this program located within the uh, government itself? Tell us as much as you possibly can about this uh, program. Survival Skills for Men was developed by Dr. Linda Thurston at Kansas State University. It was developed because there was a Survival Skills for Women program uh, that was established some six or seven years ago that has been and is changing the lives of women today. It is and was so successful that there had to be a parallel. Here comes the program for men. She developed this program at Kansas State University and in doing so, Tennessee became one of the pilot sites. Mm -hmm. And our government and our administrators, our commission, Dr. James Davenport, mm -hmm. and the human services got together and uh, accepted this challenge. Mm -hmm. I applaud them for accepting that challenge because it helps to address current issues today. Mm -hmm. And Nashville was one of the sites selected, as was Memphis, as a pilot study. And Praise the Lord, I have been selected to be the first facilitator out of Nashville. We went to an, a very intensive study course that lasted three or four days in Memphis. And uh, we were, the, the program began in Nashville. Our recipient, recipients came from the Department of Human Services. The program is a 10 session workshop that covers money management, that covers coping with crisis, mm -hmm. it covers uh, physical, I mean, health, health problems, mm -hmm. it covers uh, different things dealing with the family, dealing with legal, legal rights, legal responsibilities, and et cetera. And so this is a program that attempts to reach a certain uh, group of uh, males rather than uh, any other group. And uh, it, uh, is, uh, we're blessed uh, because it addressed a issue, a problem that prevails in our mm -hmm. society today. Mm -hmm as an unforgotten entity, the male. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has come, the situation has come back and they addressed this problem and it is successful. When you talk about survival skills, and I think you've already mentioned that uh, there are a number of seminars connected with this and, and, and a course of study, but exactly uh, what are we talking about? I mean, uh, are these the skills that a person will need in order to survive and, and, and is it more than just survival? Or what, what, exactly uh, what are we talking about? In, in in terms of skills. Takes, for instance, the goals and aspirations. Uh, it is a situation where men sit down in a group setting and explain, explore, and find out who our heroes are. I break the, I use myself as an icebreaker. My parents were my uh, heroes. My father and my mother, they're both still living. We have seven kids, all of us graduated from college. So there in itself, they have led us and given us the, the roots to do and excel in what we're about. So what we try to do is in each one of these different workshops, we have a, a practical experience. As we hash the different subject around, these guys are experts in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So we utilize that in conjunction with the educational material and what a beautiful, beautiful issue and, and discussion we do get from that. What are, what are the natures of some of the discussions that uh, you happen to supervise there dealing with these young men? Well, probably one of the most is getting a job. Mm. Now, most people think just if you go out and look for three different sites, that's uh, enough to get a job. Mm. Finding a job is a 40-hour week job in itself. Mm. And we've got to reiterate to these guys that if you want to find, work is there. Mm -hmm. But if you want to find a job, you really have to put something into it. Not just going to a place applying for a job, but it's your appearance, mm -hmm. how you go, how you talk, mm -hmm. how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. What if you, first of all, we stop and say, well, how have you done it in the past? Let's make a change. Mm -hmm. Let's try to improve on your approach about mm -hmm. procuring work. In other words, you were not successful in, 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 in securing a job in the past, so evidently something was wrong, and so now you're concerned about improving whatever they've uh, been able to do. That is true, and 
networking probably is your biggest element. They only have a limited uh, source of places to go seeking work. Mm -hmm. They'll come to the unemployment office or they'll go to office here or there, but family becomes a very uh, important part of networking for work. Mm -hmm. Your churches, your mm -hmm. different people that you know, friends of friends become important mm -hmm. as well as the employment security mm -hmm. office. When you, when you think about uh, the uh, survival skills and some of the uh, problems that many of these young uh, persons have, uh, exactly what age group are we talking about and uh, what education level uh, do, do we find that you're dealing with for the most part? We're dealing with men from ages 18 to 40 and all of these are food stamp recipients. So they have their own food stamps, and that's one of the criteria to be eligible for the program. Well, why, well, why don't you talk about the eligibility now? Because I'm sure that, uh, that there are some persons who are watching this morning who would like to know about how to uh, become involved in such a program and, and, and exactly some of the things that are uh, uh, connected with that program. Well, it is exclusive for us, uh, food stamp recipients, and anyone who's interested uh, must go through the food stamp office, the Human Services mm -hmm. Department, and they will refer you or the person who is a, want to be attendee to employment security. And so in, in many instances, uh, many of these persons in terms of their own education level might not have uh, completed high school. Uh, is, is that it? Uh, or do you find that? Well, the good thing about the Tennessee Department of Employment Security, we have so many programs that meet the needs of all of the people. So mm -hmm. they need to go and contact some of the agencies and find out mm -hmm. what, what programs are available and get in those said programs. We at Employment Security, we do have referrals from Human Services and uh, going back to get your GED is mm -hmm. one program. Mm -hmm. So whatever your problem is or whatever the situation you find yourself, it can be give you some directions about what to do. In other words, no matter uh, what your situation might be, whether you're connected with uh, the program that you facilitate or some other program, that the Department of Employment Security has uh, some pr program or some project that can assist you in uh, improving whatever you wish to uh, do. Is, is that essentially what we're saying? Getting jobs is the main problem for the males. And uh, education or training programs, they are a plenty. Mm -hmm. You need to go to one of the local employment security offices to find out what is available and then make contact to get into that program. You know, uh, uh, sometimes we talk about uh, some of the real problems of young people and I think we <laughs> dealt with this whole question of uh, violence uh, and especially among teenagers and, and, and that kind of uh, thing. Uh, what, what about your program? Uh, can your program do anything in order to deal with this as a regional problem or a national problem or what? Uh, how do you see that? Well, no one has the answers. But you have to make a try. In our family man section of our program, uh, dealing with the attendees themselves, I've come up with a questionnaire about anger control. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in their lives have that ever been addressed. Mm -hmm. So I go to the source. Why are you angry? Who are you angry at? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the problems and a lot of the answers I hear from uh, the seven groups I've had is I'm angry because I didn't do what I should have mm -hmm. or what I could have. I'm really angry at, at self, myself. Itself. You find that to be find quite... That to uh, be quite prevalent. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, no, no, no. What, what, what can you do in, in terms of addressing that as an issue? I mean, is there any kind of uh, program that you have or any kind of special kind of information that you give them to deal with self or what? Well, no, I, I can't uh, get... Be, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like mm -hmm. that from that standpoint, but if I do find someone who has some, I can refer them further to another agency that might be able to help them. But most of all, if they'll just stop and analyze who I am, where I am, mm -hmm. and then try to figure out a plan where I want to be mm -hmm. five or six years from there. If they begin to, to try to do those things, they're headed in the right direction. And so you, you, you not only you, uh, are you dealing with survival skills, but you're also talking about goals and objectives and how they might be able to achieve those goals by applying them to their own uh, lives. So. And what we try to do there in goals and aspirations, mm -hmm. we try them to set a short-term goal, mm -hmm. something that is realistically attainable. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, if it's no more than just getting work, mm -hmm. right now they're unemployed, mm -hmm. just to get a job. If that's a short-term mm -hmm. goal, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever, whatever the goal, just uh, the, 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 there has to be some kind of movement sure. in their lives uh, indicating that they have been uh, quite successful. I would imagine that uh, with a program like that, that uh, you can talk about a number of success uh, programs, I mean successes that you've had uh, in such a program. 
Why don't you, uh, and since we do hear so much about the negatives and whatnot, uh, why don't you give us some, some, some things that you would consider to be uh, so important that it makes the program worthwhile, some success stories that you can tell us about personally? Well, just here lately, we start out with uh, the program. We have about 10 to 15 attendees. And an employer happened to hear about the program and uh, called our office manager to see if uh, they could get a large number of employees. Mm -hmm. Well, my manager, Mrs. Sarah Merrill, she turned the information over to me. So she mm -hmm. said, that here's a possibility to get some of these guys work because that's what mm -hmm. we're about. Mm -hmm. So I called the guy, Matt Gannon at Hamilton Riker Company. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, you do want some workers yet? He said, yes. I said, I have some guys in a special program, this survival skills program. See, I heard about it. I said, mm -hmm. would you hire them in disregard to their work history? He said, whoa, what do you mean by that? I said, would you give them a chance? Mm -hmm. He said, i tell you what, I'll come out to your place and uh, talk to the guys. He did, he came out to uh, 301 where our office is located right there on James Robertson Parkway. And we had about 12 or 13 guys in attendance. Mm -hmm. He hired 11 on the spot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the Wilson's Sporting Goods place. I was so elated. I was just thrilled to death that an employer would break down his old ties, his old uh, ego, and say, hey, I will hire them mm -hmm. if they have took the initiative to go through some type of program mm -hmm. to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just pleased. When, when, when you look at the program, I think you said earlier that uh, the only drawback you find on such a program is that there are not a, 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 enough slots in such programs. Uh, let's talk about that, uh, not in, by means of uh, criticism, but by means of information, because uh, in this new situation that we're in now, this new economy and whatnot, uh, there are going to be many, many opportunities for people. And, and it does seem to me that this is uh, a, a program that can be replicated in other areas. What do you see as some of the shortcomings in terms of what you're dealing with now? Well, it's not a shortcoming right now, but uh, I, I envision it being expanded. I talked to my commissioner, James Davenport, and he indicated that the continuation was probable. And they had to look at some statistics and other things. And it also weighed upon the federal funding and whatever. But mm -hmm. he almost assured me that there would be some improvement in the program because he was pleased how the program was running. Yes, uh, I meet uh, twice a week, Wednesday and Fridays. It's a three-hour workshop session. But uh, and the, the rate of completion stands about 52%. Mm -hmm. However, the employment rate stands at 42%. Mm -hmm. That's 90 Four percent of the people who come in, something happens. Uh, vid, There's okay. a change mm -hmm. in the direction in which mm -hmm. they were going. I am just tickled to death that mm -hmm. I can be involved in such a program. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the other uh, similar kinds of uh, uh, programs that uh, that the department offers that our audience might be uh, either uh, concerned about becoming involved in, or just concerned about in terms of having the knowledge to know where the tax money is going? What are some of the other things? Well, that we the, do? the GED program is one of them. They have a uh, uh, other tax shelter programs, the TJTC program, uh, they have some programs for veterans. It's, there's so many, too, too many, too numerous mm -hmm. to mention that all they have to do is if you have a problem and are stuck in a situation, you have to go to somebody. What I'm finding is that a lot of people do not want to ask. Mm -hmm. Asking someone gives public indication that it's a downer. Mm -hmm. And they have to change from that uh, uh, situation and begin to ask for help. It's not forever. And us being having problems is only a comma in the sentence of one's life. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, and, 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 and so uh, the department has a, a whole array of various programs that people who find themselves with their backs up against the wall for whatever, but they have to take the initiative they to do to it. They have to take the That's right. That's and correct. I, and, and, of course, your program, Survival Skills, will deal with, that, uh, with them taking that kind of initiative. Sure. The educational part of our program include those... Uh, uh, workshop topics, but additionally what I've done is uh, I've ensured and, and insisted that the guys make sure they have a social security card, mm -hmm. make sure they have a library